everyone. All right, and we are back. I'm with Connie. How are you, Connie? Awesome. How are you? I am fantastic. What a what a beautiful day. You know, a bit bittersweet, like we were just talking about good ups and downs, but that thus be Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I was going to say, so for, for people maybe tuning in for the first time, there is like a part one, right, that you and I did, I think a couple weeks ago, so they should check that out. But today is going to be a bit more organic. And then, and, and one thing we do uh, that I'm really excited about that we're going to be doing a little bit later is the, the screen share and the, the demo of GiveTrack which um, again, Connie gave me a sneak peek at, you know, in one of our calls, and I was just like, how on earth did I not know about this? And, and I just want everyone, you know, at least in my circle to, to be aware. Okay, but before we do, um, anything that's top of mind or anything that you want to maybe start off with, Connie? <laughs> I, I there's, you know, in the world of Bitcoin, there's always crazy stuff going on. <laughs> so like you were just talking about Elon Musk coming out with his Bitcoin support. And um, yeah, and I was thinking like of Jack Dorsey too, like he came out last year with his Bitcoin hashtag and he's the CEO of Twitter and on Twitter, he doesn't say that, nor does he say he's the CEO of Square. It just says hashtag Bitcoin. <laughs> Was it Naval last week or someone said that, so I'm going to butcher it, but something along the lines, like if you can silence the king, you are the king. <laughs> So, wow. the, so, so, I mean, that's kind of what happened, you know, a couple weeks ago. So I'm just saying is like, yeah. Jack Dorsey's obviously a very powerful man and a very smart man. And so for him to uh, say that on his Twitter handle as his only statement, massive. And then Elon, who's like out of this earth, literally, right? Like, I mean, like crazy. And now he's got it as of what, like six hours ago or 12 hours ago. What is happening, uh, Connie? Like, what is it? And again, you know, um, uh, like, what is it? What is it? What's happening right now? Like, what? Why? On? Like, uh, have you been following this Wall Street bet stuff much, or not really? Uh, not that as much. A little bit on the GameStop craziness and Robinhood craziness, but um, I'm always so like overwhelmed with just what I have on my plate that I see the headlines of things and I kind of get a gist, but not much time to dive deeper. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Hey, one other thing I was going to ask you about: Have you actually experimented with Clubhouse? I have. have you... I've been on it recently. Yeah, I got um, I got on it when we had a holiday, ML M uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So I had like time to actually listen to stuff. Cool. What do you think? Like, yeah, it was really cool. I actually like it. You can jump in and out of different rooms and just listen. You can learn a lot. You can get the pulse on things from people. Um, and actually the first room I was ever in, I joined as a speaker and was talking about BitGive and stuff. So, you know, um, you can, you know, share insights as well, or just kind of listen along while you're cooking. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm, I'm like not much of a social media, like fan. I do like Twitter, but other than that, not, excuse me, not really a big, big fan of like Facebook and all that, but oh my God, like, uh, did, uh, does that app ever capture, you know, your imagination in terms of what's possible is ton of Bitcoin to me, it feels like, like you, well, you've been to one of the events that we did in Toronto, right? You've been to so many events, but like, to me, it kind of captured the main essence of being in an event. I felt like, yeah. you know, like that, that feeling of like walking into a room and like networking yeah. and, and having speakers. And I was just like, wow, this is insane. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm always blown away. It's like by. the perfect outlet when we can't go to events and we can't get together in person to have something like that. So right yeah. right or even once they're back i can see people home oh, and i'm such a big like event junkie and all that and i and i got tired of them after a while i'm just like i don't want to travel anymore i hate getting on planes yep. now to be able to whip out my phone when i'm anywhere and just i'm in it i'm in, in a conference with like you know 10 of the smartest people like right now available to talk about this, this is crazy uh i i'm loving it and i think i think the the bitcoin thing is starting to meet the wall street bets thing and i think the wall street bets i don't want to go into detail about it but it essentially the the gen the younger generation if you will they're they're waking up to concepts such as like censorship resistance and you know like the whole system i guess to some extent being rigged against a little guy i know there's a there's a strong kind of opposing view as well i was listening to a lot of the lawyers speak about how 
you know, how what they did on the Reddit uh, channels was like actually wrong. But anyways, despite that, I think the fact that people are, it's like people are calling it like a Wall Street, you know, Occupy Wall Street part two type of deal, right? <laughs> and uh, and then on top of that, Robin Hood, I think if I'm not, you know, um, if I'm not misquoting, I think they, they, they stopped crypto trading. And, and so I think a lot of people are now just excited about, you know, Bitcoin. And I think it's an exciting time. And so big, it's what Elon Musk changes his like profile handle. Like that is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, 44 yeah. million followers, 44 million. I'm like, cause I looked at his and then I looked at Jack's and Jack has like 5 million. And I was like, okay, <laughs> wow. You know, like, it's gonna he, really explode, and who knows? Had, if he's thinking about you know building it into like his cars, or I don't know what he's thinking. Um, there's actually a huge kind of blockchain company going on in Reno, where it's sort of near the Tesla plant, and um, I, it's been kind of a weird thing. That nobody knew what they were doing exactly. And then they, they came out with this plan that they were going to build an entire like city on blockchain. Um, it was very, you know, esoteric, like who knows what they're actually doing. But when it first came out, it was like huge news because they did a giant land grab and spent, you know, millions of dollars on a huge swath of land in Reno. And it was called blockchains.llc or something. And everyone was like, what are these people doing with all this acreage? and blockchain, right? <laughs> and, you know, Tesla is right there. I mean, within, you know, 30 minutes or less. So, yeah. It might interesting, be interesting. So do you think this, I mean, it, it, every morning I wake up and I, I ask myself, I'm like, is this the inflection point? Is this the point where like, but it, every day it feels like that, doesn't it? Like, I remember last week I woke up and it was a former prime minister of Canada that was like, I could see Bitcoin as, you know, being on the central bank balance sheet. Yeah. I was like, this is insane. I didn't think this would happen forever. And every day I find myself saying the same thing. And so now it's like the wealthiest guy on earth. Like, thank you. Um, okay. But in the midst of all this, like, again, NGU, right? Number go up uh, meme. People should be thinking more about NGOs, right? Or, or maybe more about like giving back. Um, because uh, I always say like, you know, at least for me, the, the most amazing experience has been like the ability to give away Bitcoin, right? Whether it was back in 2012, 2013, you see people who's like, here, here's, so here's a Bitcoin and yeah. giving it is in essence, it's, 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 the, it's the easiest way for adoption. Like today I got so many calls from friends that were like, okay, I'm ready to buy, you know, hundred grand, 50 grand, da, da, da. but it's like, these are wow. people that you just kind of like, you know what I mean? So I, I, th I think if people can experience Bitcoin also, you know, it's just like, it just, it just adds to how amazing it is. Right. And especially if, if the, this, the way it's designed and the fact that the value can go up so much puts people, Bitcoiners in a position to give. Right. And so, so that's really what your, you know, kind of mission has been about your company or your organization rather has been, BitGive has been focused on. So I guess yeah. any, I don't know, any, any, thoughts anything you want to share before we go into like you know screen shares and all that in terms of an update from our last call um or yeah, yeah. well i can touch a little bit on you know like you said giving back and um kind of the the relevant topics more coming up these days is around taxes and you know people are going to be looking at their gains and trying to figure out what to do and you know, we usually push at the end of the year, a huge campaign around giving back, because if you do it during the tax year, you can actually offset your gains. You can benefit yourself when it comes time to file your taxes. And a lot of people aren't listening and not thinking about taxes in the fall, right? And now they are. So it's still an opportunity even now to give back. It's just, it will help you in 2021 taxes instead of 2020. Um, but I always try to put that message out because even for people who aren't necessarily super philanthropic, it actually is a really great um, solution to offsetting taxes. And you can give back and you can do good instead of paying the IRS, right? I mean, so um, so that's one kind of topic I've been hearing a lot lately about is the Cool. Taxes. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah.
Um, and, and what about for those people who are very philanthropic? What, what, did, what What's their message? Like, for example, the, 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 the pineapple expresses of the world, was it? Pineapple fund or whatever of the world? What are the people that are just sitting on way too much money and don't know what to yeah. do with it? What, 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 what's the message to them? Yeah, well, I mean, we've been working on this for, it's been almost eight years now. It's, you know, use, how to give back using crypto, but it's not just about that. It's about actually teaching NGOs to use the technology too. So for us, it's much more than just, you know, cranking crypto into fiat for NGOs. Um, we're really hands-on and we've built a platform, which I'll show you today on top of, of Bitcoin. And we use RSK to use more complexity on top of the Bitcoin network. And we teach NGOs why they should actually care about this technology. What does it do for them? How does it change the game? So for us, it's multi-level. It's, <clears throat> it's about having impact on the ground today, really helping people, really addressing issues, but also demonstrating the benefits of the tech itself with real use cases and real NGOs and getting them onboarded and adoption at that level, at the institutional level. Well, this is like, I'm super excited because this is literally like the most, I, I think on the day that Elon is going to talk about Bitcoin, this is the thing everyone needs to be thinking about, right? Yeah. It's like, how do we give back? I don't know. I think, I think it's an important message and, and the subtle point there, which I think I, um, I think people should know is, is that you built this platform that you're about to show people on top of yeah. Bitcoin. People, people don't think that you can build on top of Bitcoin. Yeah. They only think you can build on top of Ethereum. So I guess my first question to you is why would you even want to build it on top of Bitcoin? Uh, yeah, we used to get this question a lot um, because, you know, Ethereum's out there and there were at times, you know, all the ICOs and all the other things going on. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people ask us about this and they categorize us like as maximalists and all this other stuff, which I don't think we really are. But from a technical standpoint, Bitcoin is clearly the top, you know, front and center and long term sustainable solution to be building on top of. And <clears throat> I apologize, my throat. But um, for me, I'm in this for the long game. You know, I've already been at this for eight years. It's not, you know, I'm not in this for short term gains and it's about building something that's sustainable and that has longevity for our users and for NGOs. And we work on a global scale. We have we have projects in 27 different countries. So we're not, you know, it's not, we're not just playing a little like game over in the corner, trying something out. We're not just running a pilot or experimenting. We're actually building for the long term and we're having real projects today use it but with the game that it'll still be usable in 10 years, you know? And to me, that's what Bitcoin offers. I mean, if you think about the access to people globally, the size of the network, the number of nodes, the longevity of, of Bitcoin and the technology, the security level of it never being hacked in what, 12 years now, um, nothing failing really other than things that are human caused um, that to me is the system you build on top of if you're thinking of the long term. Okay, amazing. So, so what, what, so anything else you want to share before we dive into the kind of the demo or the screen share? Um, now, just a quick note that um, we just announced um, the completion of our COVID emergency relief fund. So we were really excited about that. I'll use that as part of the demo, but just sort of an intro to it is that we put out almost $16,000 to three different beneficiaries and we used our platform to fundraise for that and then distribute the funds. And it was all for COVID emergency relief. So it was focused on medical workers for PPE, uh, vulnerable populations in the US and in Africa for um, lack of income, losing their jobs, um, and even like uh, in the U.S. gigs, gig workers and service workers, those types that really were kind of lost when everything shut down. They had nowhere to go, no support. Um, so we're really excited about that. That's our latest big announcement. Um, so I can, you know, show you more about it when I do the demo, but we're pretty stoked about that. Yeah. Cool. 
Okay, so uh, and and I guess another thing, um, Connie, like if there are people out there, right, listening to this, um, aside from just giving, you know, a, a Bitcoin to and you know one of the NGOs, are there other ways that that the community can be more helpful, um, you know, for towards your mission, Absolutely, your cause? Absolutely, yes. So we are a nonprofit. Um, we have limited resources. So, you know, if it's not funding, it's great to have people, you know, donate their services. We've had pro bono work done for us extensively with um, law firms. And um, I should name them really because it was huge. Like Perkins Coey and Goodwin Law have given us a ton of pro bono work. And uh, Waxman PR has been doing pro bono uh, PR for us in, for years. Um, so things like that. They cost a lot of money. If you don't have the money, you can't do them. You know, right. like give track our, our platform is GDPR compliant, like tons of money to do something like that. Right. And we were able to do it because Goodwin supported us. So um, yeah, that kind of stuff is great. And um, just sharing about us, telling people about us. I think there's a lot, a lot of people out there that have still haven't heard of BitGive or give track. Um, and that we have real use cases out there in the industry to, you know, demonstrate the tech. Um, and it's not just about speculating on coins and sitting on exchanges day trading all day. It's actually, you know, real stuff that can make a difference in the world. And the more we put that out there, I think the better. And for, and like, a, uh, again, I, I do a lot of content around kind of business development and all of that, right? Partnerships, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I'm curious to know a little bit more in terms of like specifically how can, um, so I imagine there's probably two sides of the equation. One is donors and people maybe sitting on large amounts of Bitcoin or institutions or companies. Now, I mean, Fidelity, I mean, you name it, everybody, right? Like Cash App is holding it, like, come on. Uh, like, come on, come on. Like, seriously, <laughs> like, like all these guys, they put like a Bitcoin in and now it's like 10x, 20x, whatever, whatever. So, uh, okay. But, but then, then the other side of the equation, so it's not, so it's one side is like people who want to give companies you want to give. And the other side of the equation are, I assume NGOs, right. And like these entities that are kind of all over the world. Um, what are some examples of those NGOs just so that people have kind of a, you know, a good idea of, you know, yeah, like what types have- of entities. We have a full spectrum, you know, from small ones to really large ones and all over the world. So um, some of our smaller ones are <clears throat> like NGOs you would have never heard of in like, you know, Uganda and stuff. Um, and all the way up to, well, I'd say mid-sized ones like the Water Project is, you know, several million dollar annual budget building projects in Africa. Um, a lot of people have heard of Code to Inspire, which is a, a coding school in Afghanistan. Um, and can you share? Do you mind sharing a little bit of? Because you told me a little bit about that. I thought it was such a cool story. Do you mind? And I think uh, that lady is on my list of people I'd like to have on the show. But uh, what's her name again? Starts uh, with an F, right? Farashta Faro. Yeah, you should definitely have her. She's amazing. Um, she, honestly, she's like one of my top people in the world that I just absolutely admire so much. Um, yeah, so she <clears throat> she was a refugee um, from Afghanistan to Iran in her childhood and uh, got somehow got to the US. I'm not sure about how that happened, has a computer science degree um, and founded this organization, Code to Inspire, that started a coding school in Herat, Afghanistan for young women. Um, so she is in New York and she fundraises in the US, uh, but everything goes to Herat and they've built a school and they do classes for girls and they're all across the board, like graphics, graphic design, um, blockchain and crypto, uh, web development, full stack, you, you name it. And it's pretty amazing stuff. And then once the girls uh, graduate and are ready to do work, they help them find work. So like we actually have hired one of them to help us with our website. Um, they just put out several videos of, of women who are working for startups in the US cool. but remotely from Afghanistan. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. I like those. I like those stories, you know, because like when we just use words like NGOs and nonprofit, sometimes we kind of, uh, you know, people 
we lose them right but it's like when you hear about like these people that are doing these things it's just like oh my god how can you not help them yes. <laughs> um, I love that and she's like a huge believer in bitcoin too and so what she's trying to do is is finish the last mile so that the girls can get paid in bitcoin and then actually have a way of cashing it out and using it on the ground so she's wow. trying to get a bitcoin atm put in at the school Yes. Whoa, whoa. I know I have a lot of P Bitcoin ATM people that probably follow on Twitter and YouTube. So we should we should definitely get some help on that, man. Oh, OK, that's yeah. exciting. OK, <laughs> awesome OK, yeah. OK. Yeah. And then we have like really okay. large organizations as well, like Save the Children, Heifer International, uh, Black Girls Code is currently fundraising on our platform. So is Heifer. Um, so it really, you know, goes from these giant international groups to these small little NGOs in, in you know, countries in Africa um, and everything in between. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, uh, and again, I, I think we could probably do another whole like uh, episode on just like, you know, doing profiling on these people that, that you know, these people on the ground kind of helping. Um, but okay. So I'm kind of excited about nerding out a bit and seeing the platform and showing people, you know, how much work you guys have done behind the scenes. Cause I know it's been, you know, you, you've spent a lot of time on it and uh, your team's put a lot of energy. So I'm just excited to show awesome. people. Awesome. Okay. Okay. I've already given you screen sharing ability, so you should be able to hit that green okay. button. Okay. Let's go for it. Um, I'm going to stretch my screen back out too. So, okay. Can you see that? Yep. Can you see uh, revolutionary donation platform? Okay. Perfect. So, um, so this is GiveTrack and it's live and working today. So anyone can go to GiveTrack.org and try it out. Um, we have uh, basically on the front page the projects that are currently fundraising. So I just mentioned Black Girls Code. This is Heifer International, Save the Children Mexico. Um, mm. We have several that are under implementation. So they're currently done fundraising and actually working on the projects on the ground. Um, South Africa, Chile, and Venezuela are these three. And these are just a few that we are featuring. Um, mm -hmm. And then we also have completed projects. So this is the one I was just talking about uh, with Code to Inspire. It's done now. And we fundraise for them to get computers, really high um, functioning graphics design computers for their school. Um, and then I also mentioned our relief fund. So we have a bunch of projects that are already closed out and have been implemented that you can see, you know, the whole process from start to finish as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, so what I thought I would do is um, first show you kind of how to support these projects, because that's kind of the front front line piece. And we can use um, Black Girls Code is our example. So if you click on them, <clears throat> pardon me, my voice is really not happy today. Um, it's, it's loading really slowly because I'm trying to do a Zoom and <laughs> and this on my bandwidth, but. <clears throat> do you mind making it full screen? Go, uh, I don't know how to do like on that. the top left, the green button on the top left, the green on the left side. We, yeah, right there. No. Yeah. Oh, got it. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah. So, so when you click on a project, you can actually see, you know, the whole idea of give track is to be transparent. So they tell you up front, this is what we're fundraising for and how much money we need and where we're going to spend it. And then you can follow it later and see that they actually did that and using this, you know, technology using Bitcoin and blockchain. So they present the case of what they're trying to fundraise for, what the problem is they're trying to address. In this case, they're raising money to, to get computers for the girls at their school to learn about cryptocurrency, blockchain, Bitcoin, smart contracts, just super cool. Um, and they're explaining what the where goal is, is 10,000 and how they're gonna get to that. So they're gonna get 10 laptops in their first milestone. They can break this down into milestones, which is really fun when they start to implement. 
Um, and then the uh, second one is 10 more. So they basically split it up in case they don't meet their, meet their full goal. They can still get, you know, 10 laptops if they meet the 10, the first milestone goal. Um, and then as they are, you know, fundraising or implementing, they can post updates here, which is just simple stuff like you would, could potentially put on like Twitter, but it just lets you know, like how things are going and it keeps people engaged. So if you wanted to donate to this project or any project on our platform, um, we have three different ways you can do that. First is Bitcoin, which is the most, you know, easiest and straightforward way to donate if you already have Bitcoin. Um, the second is that we have an integration with Uphold where you can actually donate um, any fiat currency or cryptocurrency that they support. And I think they're up to over 60 different currencies now. Um, and then- fiat, You mean fiat like with banking fiat or you mean like fiat as in uh, like stable coin fiat? No, no, fiat and cryptocurrencies. So nice. stable coins, you name it. I think, like I said, I think they have over 60 different um, fiat and cryptocurrencies that you could use through Uphold to donate here. I see. Okay. Oh, there are um, other cryptos. Got it. It says there. Okay. Okay. They're cryptos. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then there's yeah. credit card, debit card too. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then we added this, which is actually huge. It, it seems like it's normal to just, of course you would have that, but it was huge for us because our platform t needs to convert everything into Bitcoin in order to then track it on the blockchain. And so this is an integration with Wire that takes credit or debit cards or even Apple Pay um, from a donor. And then our platform through Wire converts it automatically into Bitcoin and sends Bitcoin to the nonprofit's wallet. And the wallet is specific to their pro this project on GiveTrack. So because obviously we want to, you know, um, track the funds. So I'll show you how we do that. Um, there's a couple different ways we do that, but this is the visual um, way. So you can basically see um, this is a visualization of the blockchain data. So you can see who has donated to this campaign and people can be anonymous if they want, like this, this one at the bottom. So, you know, if you want your privacy, you can see how much Black Girls Code has already raised and what's in their wallet for this project. Um, and then I'll show you later um, for projects that are implemented, you can then see it flowing back out of the wallet and they explain how they spend the money. Um, this one is still fundraising, so they're not at that stage yet. <clears throat> so that's basically the, you know, the first experience as a donor that one might have um, using our platform. And um, you can also just follow a project. If you don't want to make a donation, you can just click this follow button and it'll give you all the updates and and basically the sim a similar experience as though you had donated so that you can kind of try out the platform without actually having to donate. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. I love it, I love <laughs> Pretty it. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So then what I thought I would show you is- Yeah, go ahead. Another project, unless you, mm -hmm. do you have quite any questions about this? Because I'll, I'll jump into um, one that's already been implemented <clears throat> next but I should pause and see if you want to ask anything. I, I like that no I, I like it so far I think uh, I think it makes sense I like the trackability like you know because I, I think when you're giving money there's always that concern like oh is it getting to the end person that you're trying to get it to and um, so I like the fact that you know you're kind of leveraging and, and how, okay when you say you built it on Bitcoin um, was it RSK or like how did you guys uh, what did you guys how did you bridge that gap and like this like this website is not on Bitcoin, right? It's like, this is a front end, but it's like all the tracking and everything. Is that what you mean when you say you built it on? Yes. You know I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So we have like a whole full stack, you know, system behind this. So we have, you know, a lot of stuff on AWS. We have a RSK node, um, you know, lots of API integrations. There's all kinds of stuff going on in the, you know, behind this. 
um, that bring it forward. But as far as the, the Bitcoin piece um, and RSK piece, it's basically everything that happens on the platform is being recorded on the RSK blockchain. And we actually have our own explorer on, on RSK. So you, you can just see give track stuff. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of mostly about notarizing and timestamping things, but um, it also, we also have a smart contract as well on each project and it manages the flow of the project's um, implementation over time. So that's a little hard to show because- Oh, that's okay. No, no. Really yeah. Right, right. No, no, it's you don't really have to show it. But no, like that, but that's interesting though, right? The fact that you are doing that though, like you're actually executing the smart contracts on, you know, the Bitcoin blockchain. I think it's super cool. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. So there's different projects on here and um, and people can go and donate and then people can also, oh, there you go. So you've got the donate and you got startup project. Cool. I love it. Yeah. The UI is super clean and I don't know. I think it's great. <laughs> Yeah, it's we're pretty happy with it. I mean, we have a really amazing team, you know, behind all of this. And I have to say, as the founder, you know, I'm a I'm a non-technical founder. So the team has been the one doing all of this. And we're at the most cutting edge, you know, you could possibly imagine, especially for a nonprofit, um, using the most innovative tech at the most, you know, pushing the envelope way, right? We're not just cranking, you know, crypto into fiat for NGOs, we're, we built an entire platform that uses it for transparency. So I gotta say big props to my team, like for being able to do this. It was, it's never been done before. It was a huge undertaking. Um, and, you know, thanks to our donors and you mentioned Pine or Pineapple Fund earlier. I mean, largely that's what funded this to go from MVP to 1.0 um, was pineapple funds support. So, um, so yeah, so I wanted to show you another project. So this one is, is completed um, so we can follow it through the end. Uh, this is the emergency fund relief that I was explaining earlier for COVID. And this is a unique one because you'll see here the organization is actually us, which normally it's other NGOs using our platform. So this was a unique case where we decided to do an emergency fund through BitGive and identify upfront beneficiaries and fundraise for um, emergency relief. So um, this was also supported by RSK. They actually um, donated $10,000 towards this campaign, which was huge. Um, and helped us promote it. So it was uh, a really amazing partnership with them. Um, so basically what we did was we decided, okay, what do we wanna do? Who's the most vulnerable right now with COVID? This was launched back in May. So it's been you know, some time now. And we identified obviously medical workers and getting PPE out to the people on the front lines was really critical as well as uh, vulnerable communities who are already impoverished and then getting hit on top of that with COVID, um, as well as like hourly workers and gig workers and service workers who were really struggling when the whole entire economy shut down um, and they didn't really have anywhere to go as far as um, you know getting unemployment or things like that because they weren't in the system as an employee to do something like that, right? So, um, so we identified um, three NGOs that were supporting those populations that we would um, that would be the beneficiaries of the fund. So it was direct relief, uh, give directly, and um, one fair wage that had an emergency fund specific for COVID. Um, and we identified up front. You know, th this is actually the implemented version of the milestones, but before it's implemented, you identify up front what you're going to do with the funds. Now it's been done. So you can actually see all of the backup and support to prove that we did what we said we were going to do with this money. Um, so we raised about, it was over 15,000. It was pretty close to 16,000. And we shared it amongst these three NGOs. Um, and you can see how much money went to each one. 
um, you can actually download uh, receipts, which in this case is um, a receipt of um, us making the donation to the NGO. So this is the letter from Direct Relief confirming that they received um, 0.4475 Bitcoin. Um, and you can, you can view it on the blockchain if you're, we call this like geek mode because a lot of people, you know, in, in, in our mainstream audience wouldn't necessarily know what this means, <laughs> but it's here and you can actually see, um, here's the 0.4475 going, cool. right? So for the people who want to see that, it's there. Um, you can see each one here. So the next one went so, to- So if Jack uh, Dorsey and Elon Musk, if you're watching right now, you know, come on, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all done. It's yeah, all done. Right? <laughs> you know, it's funny if you see that I love because, it. Uh, Jack, Dorsey, Jack Dorsey last year announced mm. that he was uh, donating, I think it was over $5 billion uh, to mm. nonprofits. And he wanted to be transparent about it. And he Hello. shared his, yeah, but you know how he did it? He shared a Google spreadsheet. So what, wah, wah, wah. I mean, we, we can improve, <laughs> improve on that strategy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? How about we do it on the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain, baby? Ooh, I love it. Okay, so this is so good. Okay. So we've been, we've been trying to get to him and show him gift track because I mean, hello. But, well, now we can let YouTube work its magic, hopefully. Yeah, right. <laughs> you guys um, need to see this, right? Because it's not just about NGU. Like I say, it's about NGOs. That should be, okay, let's keep going. I, I like this. It. I like this. Cool. You have pictures on the left here of what, of the people actually yeah, receiving so it? Yeah, so there's images um, from each of the NGOs. So this is um, the shipments being made of PPE with direct relief. Our specific donation went to um, Latin America um, and Caribbean um distributions and you know they're they're working at like huge scales so our small donation went to you know be was part of a much larger distribution um and then <clears throat> excuse me this is uh give directly showing um direct cash transfers to um this is a woman in kenya specific um basically through m-pesa is they're sending funding directly to um, families. And then uh, this is um, the US um, One Fair Wage group who is sending checks, which is, you know, basically the same thing as a direct cash transfer to um, gig workers and service workers who are out of work through COVID. Um, so yeah, so you can see the pictures, you can see the receipts, you can see all the um, transactions. This this one we split in two for Give Directly because they have a US program and an Africa program. So we split it across the two. Um, and then you see this view and graph. So this takes us back to what I had showed you earlier, but it shows the outgoing transactions as well. So you can see all the donors to this campaign. Um, and, and here's IOV, which is, is the parent company to RSK. Um, you can see the total amount raised, and then you can see the contributions going out to the NGOs. So these are the two that went to give directly. And then um, I'm not sure which one is which here, but one of these is um, direct relief, and the other is um, one fair wage. And what's really cool about this one, and several of our projects have this, is that we actually made the donations in Bitcoin for the majority of these. So when we made the donations to give directly, they accept Bitcoin. So they were made in Bitcoin. Um, and then this one is an exchange. So this one we did actually have to in, uh, convert into fiat. So this was for one fair wage. Um, and then this one was also done in Bitcoin to direct relief because they accept Bitcoin. So you can actually see all the way to the last transaction that everything was done on the blockchain. Um, and you can, you can click on these and this is back to geek mode again, where you can confirm on um, the Explorer. So we have everything built. 
so that cool. you can show from the be beginning all the way to the end on the blockchain. And you can prove everything was done as planned to donors and the public. Where we're seeing, you know, which is probably not a surprise, a surprise to most people, where we're seeing that, you know, that's not possible most of the time is because we have not built out, and I say we as in the industry, has not built out the infrastructure globally for NGOs to use crypto on the ground. So there's still that last mile challenge <clears throat> where it needs to be converted in many cases, not in all cases, but in many cases it has to be converted. So actually- And you usually like hold the NGO's hands on that front and like kind of help them with finding, I guess, like an exchange partner or something yes, or- <clears throat> We do. Um, we do a lot of that because it's global projects. So we help them find the exchange in, in the country they need to do the exchange in and get onboarded with them. And, you know, cause this is all very foreign to most NGOs. Um, and we help, you know, help them get through the whole process really. So there's a lot of education and handholding. Um, and I can show you an example of one with Fiat. So in Afghanistan, um, you obviously can't buy computers in Afghanistan with Bitcoin. It would be great if you could. Um, we tried to have them do it through overstock, but because of sanctions, you can't really ship things to Afghanistan. So there's a lot of constraints. So they had to convert the funds, totally understandable. Um, but what they did when they reported out their milestones is they shared the receipts of actually purchasing those computers and you know how much they cost. So you still have the proof all the way to, you know, the last mile. This is exactly the kind of computers we bought, right? Um, and the cost of those computers. And you can see, even when it's done in fiat, you have a trail, right? So we've built it for the reality of today, but the future of being able to go all the way to the last mile in, in crypto. And here's the girl with the computers. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Mm. So that's it. I mean, beautiful. Beautiful. It's involved, and there's a lot more on the back end, of course. But um, but that's that's our platform. Okay. So should we? Should I stop the screen share here? Sure. If you want. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, cool. Well, that was great. Thank you, Connie, for taking us through that. I thought that was fantastic. I mean, oh, it had everything that I love about Bitcoin, you know, yeah. in terms of like you're building on Bitcoin to like enable people to give back. And, and uh, I think it's, I think it's one of the most beautiful things in the space. So um, more people should know about it and, and, you know, donate. And, you know, if you're like, if you know, NGOs that need to plug in, they should. Yeah. Um, so I think this is great. I think this is great. I think this is great. This is wonderful. Uh, Connie, anything else you want to maybe chat about? Uh, I, yeah, anything? I don't know. Anything else is this top of mind? Or, you know, there was one thing that I was kind of thinking about, which was um, I'd asked you about Kiva. Yeah. And I think you'd mentioned something about uh, one of your, I think, just an acquaintance or an advisor or someone who had had some experience there. You're also, um, you know, I was like, for people who don't know, Kiva is like a website where, you know, you can go and um, microfinance. I think that's like the technical word where I can give somebody, let's say, $25 and they, it's an interest free loan that they would give back to me uh, after a certain period of time. And then I can give that $25 to someone else. And, and the, the people are essentially building these like businesses. So, so they go and buy like six chickens as an yeah. example. And, and then they, uh, they take the eggs and they pay you back over, you know, whatever time. And then now they've got the chicken still. So they're still, so, so the idea is just to this, I love this idea of microfinancing. And so when I saw what you were doing, I, I was like thinking, I'm like, wow, is that something that you guys have thought about? And you were saying it is maybe, maybe not. Oh, absolutely is. Yeah. I think, I mean, from what we've built, there's a lot of different use cases that you could use this platform and, you know, white label it and maybe shift a few things around and use it for like Jack Dorsey's transparency platform for his 
personal donations or something like microfinance or a corporate hmm. social responsibility program. Interesting. So it is, you're, so you're saying it's like open source, white label, or no, white label rather, right? So meaning people can, well, the RSK piece, I assume that's all like a smart contract anyways, right? So that's probably open source, but you mean the whole infrastructure, you're like white labeling it so others can kind of, like I said, I just came up with this idea, which I think would be kind of cool to explore, but I could technically work with you and BitGive and create like a, a bit of an offshoot or something. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. Um, we, cool. you know, we, okay. We're not, we don't have a white label today, but we have, we know what it would take to get one. So awesome. Um, okay. And yeah, it could be, it could be tweaked for different use cases, like, um, like microfinance. And you mentioned like someone on our team used to be at Kiva. So Abby, who's our NGO um, partner success manager. She was at Kiva before she was on the ground um, in South America. And so she's very familiar with, you know, those kinds of programs. And um, I also saw the founder and CEO speak at a conference um, at Fast Forward. It's like a community of tech nonprofits. Um, and he was like, you know, a keynote speaker there. He was talking about a lot of their pain points of, Yep. you know, global fund transfers and tracking those funds as to what happened with them, right? So that, you know, they know what happened with the funds, if somebody was successful or not, can they repay it back? Yeah. When does it come back and in what form, all those things. So um, I asked him just as an audience question about, you know, had he been looking into Bitcoin and could he, could he did he see it solving some of those pain points? And he was like, oh yeah. And this was like four years ago. And he was like, oh yeah, oh my God, we're all like, what we're watching Bitcoin. And I think it would be great. He's like, it's not quite there yet, but like he was totally into it. So um, it would be great if we could get. I wonder with lightning now, uh, Connie, you know, kind of becoming more of a reality if, you know, things, and then you marry that with what you built and the Bitcoin network wow. and everything like that, 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 like, cause you know, it's, it's all moving towards like, you know, uh, decentralization, yeah. right? Like, uh, like the, the whole clubhouse thing, Naval was tweeting this morning about how that is essentially, you know, how podcast hosts are gatekeepers. Yeah. So now it's not even about podcast hosts because you're in literally a room in an organic way and we're the best kind of people who are able to capture people like through conversation kind of rise to the wow. top. It's just, and so, so, so I guess what I'm getting at is, is that with regard to giving too, I, I almost can picture a, a much more granular future too, right? Where, where I can literally pick like, oh, Jonathan in XYZ country and he has this specific need and I'm going to give him 25 bucks. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love that. So the fact that I think the the future is building towards that is just insane. And if so, I guess if there are others out there who want to see something like that happen, they can also get in touch and, and kind of, uh, cool. What else? What else, uh, Connie? Anything else you want to share, yeah, have, uh, like, I guess, on the big front? We have one front? more success um, story that just um, came out. And we, I don't even know if we pushed it out yet on social, but um, I just briefly mentioned we had a project in South Africa. And mm -hmm. that one just closed and they actually doubled their goal, which was just astonishing. And Whoa. mostly, you know, with the price going up, right? Um, so they had a goal to feed um, communities surrounding their wild, it's called Wild Tomorrow Fund. And they have a refuge mm. in a wildlife refuge in South Africa. And usually what they do is wildlife refuge stuff. But with COVID, they had to pivot and they've been trying to raise funds to just feed the communities and families surrounding their refuge and their employees and families, right? So they had originally wanted to raise enough money for one month's worth of food kits for the surrounding communities. And they raised twice, more than twice that. So now they can fund the surrounding communities for like probably close to three months, actually. Uh, with what they raised on our platform. So they're currently implementing it. They just delivered the first food parcels the other day. So um, there's no milestone report yet until they're completely done and they'll send all the paperwork in. But um, you can look at one of the updates and actually see like they're underway and some pictures and stuff. And it's just, it's amazing. So yeah. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Um, 
Okay, well that that's really exciting. That's really exciting. I think that that's awesome. Like more wins, the better. And hopefully, hopefully we can get more eyeballs on this. You know, people, if you're feeling it and you're not an NGO or a potential donor, like you know, maybe retweet, do something, right? Because because yeah. more of this stuff, I think the world needs. Um, okay, before I switch gears to maybe some a bit of extraneous topics, anything else? I guess you want to share on uh, on this front. Anything? Any follow ups from our, our last conversation? Ah. Uh- Gosh, I don't think so. I mean, we, you know, we're always working on bringing out more NGOs. So we'll have some more announced probably in March. We're working on onboarding them now. Um, Mm -hmm. We're also going to be pushing for Black History Month in February, the Black Girls campaign, the Black Girls Code campaign. So we'd love people to support that. Um, Are you part of the the horizon for now? No, I was going to say, because you talked about Black Girls Code and then this, um, there's a group, uh, a friend of mine named Lamar, uh, who's, he's like running this like clubhouse group called, I think it's called Black Bitcoin Billionaires. Oh, yeah. And it's like super just- popular, super popular. There's like always like people in there and it's like such a cool conversation. Yeah. Um, just- but, but have you gone in there yet? Is that the one you spoke in? One of the two that I've spoken in so far. Yeah, I joined the other day. Mm. Um, because I know I, Isaiah Jackson, who also was, I think, co-lead of that group or whatever. Um, yeah. And he's going to be doing a project on Give Track soon, too. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. Well, I, I really think, though, Connie, that, you know, for uh, people who are, like, doing business development, like, Clubhouse is where it's at. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, because think about it. Like, you're just networking you're talking you're building relationships so natural and it's like a conference in your pocket oh my god I'm not like you know I don't work for them or anything I'm just like I get so excited like every now and then about like certain technologies last year it was um I mean bitcoin is kind of like the underlying obviously one that's always there but last year it was um Rome research which I use actually still to this day like every day you've heard of that one right I told you that about this Rome Once research that's that. another one that was my 2020 find that I just love and uh and this year it's been it's been definitely a clubhouse Woof. mind-blowing yeah. yeah mind-blowing um okay interesting Connie so this has been great I love this catch-up you know if you want to do this again soon next whenever a couple weeks couple months just let me know um and then you know we can talk a bit more about like I would like I said I would love to do Uh, maybe some of these people themselves are available and you and I can talk to them together, but I would love to do a bit of a profile because again, I'm calling this Bitcoin stories, right? Because I think people like stories and um, I can't think of a more way, more like visceral kind of like a simpler way of making this experience more real than getting some of these people to come on and, you know, talk about what's happening. Right. Um, Oh, that would be so cool. Mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm. happy to introduce you to like all of the NGOs we work with are super excited about this technology because they have to be hands-on with it you know it's not like they're just sticking a widget up and somebody's sending fiat to their bank account it's not at all it's very hands-on and and like Elon Jack they're all Bitcoin right so I mean these NGOs come on wake up wake up wake up already like come on what's going on like the whole world is about to I think wake up I think we're on the precipice of that 2021 is like the year that we've all been preparing for for the last seven or eight you know I I, if I close my eyes I can remember um, it feels like just like yesterday I was sitting in Bangalore and I was on a Skype call with your brother you know Tony like yeah. In, like totally being like very inspirational and and kind of you know um and being the pioneer that he is and and now you know to think eight years later everything that's happened I'm, I'm sure there's still yeah. a lot of hardships ahead of us I don't think it's you know it's like um smooth sailing as you will but but um this is the time right that that you know people should be out there and uh yeah making the best yeah. of it yeah. All right, Connie. Okay, so any, I guess, aside from uh, BitGive, aside from our last conversation, I don't know, any general tips for people or anything you want to share with people that are maybe trying to do something similar to you? Because again, the building on Bitcoin uh, brand or whatever, whatever this hell this is, I'm trying to encourage more people to be a bit crazy like us. And I know it's super hard um, building in this space because it's not like despite what people think always like financially rewarding and you know your reputation is at risk I mean awkward moments around the dinner table with family well maybe not your family because you, you you got Tony in it but but you know it's just like we, we put it all on the line um 
but it's worth it. No, like, you know, you get wins like the pineapple thing that we talked about in our last episode and um, just the beautiful like product and, and solution you guys have built. I don't know. It's, it's worth it. No, <laughs> I think so. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, like in comparison to like Ethereum and other things that are out there, I think people who are in Bitcoin are like what I was saying earlier are in it for the long haul. They actually see what the long term baseline network is and and what's going to be that the thing that lasts um not to say anything bad about ethereum but just that it's not in my mind it doesn't have the longevity it doesn't have the scale it doesn't have a lot of things so if you look at something like rsk who we both mentioned a few times you can build you know second layer solutions lightning you mentioned you know you can build complexity thank you contracts on top of Bitcoin. So you have the baseline of the, the most secure, longest standing. And you're not building an ICO. Network. You're not you doing know. an ICO, right? You're doing something that serves humanity. Boom. So yeah. th this is exactly the kind of stuff I like. I love um, more people should be doing it. And you know, sometimes when you're ahead of your time, it feels like the world can be against you, but that's just the price us pioneers pay. Um, okay, okay. So I hope some people were encouraged to not just donate, not just help uh, Connie, you know, not just become an NGO that signs up, but also, um, you know, uh, yeah, maybe there's like some way you can bring your creativity, your skills, your network, your energy, your money, your time, whatever it is, and 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 get with the program because you don't want to wait 10 years and then Elon Musk says, okay, big give. Well, let's start building that now. We know these guys have a good heart, right? They want to give back, you know, Bill Gates, all these people. So I think this is a this is gonna be an interesting year, Connie. I, hey, by the way, I'm gonna be creating a lot more content too. Like I'm, I'm, if people think, you know, they're bored of me already, I'm gonna I'm gonna go nuts. So it's like I'm thinking of going like 24/7 TV action here. But wow. uh, yeah, so let's let's spend that time, like I said, doing a profile on on the type of people that you guys have been helping that would be awesome i would love that yeah yeah and i'm sure they would be too you know like like i said they're excited about the tech you know um sometimes we have to take them along to get to that point but the ones that are using our platform are really excited about this technology so cool so let's yeah. maybe uh bring this one to an end uh, that's a beautiful note to finish it off on so i'm gonna kill this here give me a second